In this section, we'll discuss Euler angles. Now, it's very important to understand that uh, Euler angles is really just a recipe uh, for a specific sequence of rotations. There are other recipes you could use to describe the rotations uh, for an object. Um, these are just well-defined, and so we use these angles because everyone can uh, speak the same language when we're using these angles. It's, it's just a very well-agreed-upon and specific sequence of rotations. There's nothing unique or, or special about this set of rotations. Let's look at how they work. Okay, so here's where we start. We have two different coordinate axes. Uh, the red one is shown here as x hat, y hat, z hat. That's going to be our lab frame. That's going to be the fixed uh, coordinate axis uh, for the inertial frame. And then aligned exactly with that coordinate axis is another one. That's the e1 triple prime, e2 triple prime, e3 triple prime coordinate axes. So those coordinates, those all, those coordinate axes agree exactly with x hat, y hat, z hat. They're basic, They're exactly the same. Now these uh, e-coordinate axes, these are going to be the coordinates that are fixed to the body. And so the red coordinate axis shown here, that's going to remain fixed, but the blue coordinate, uh, the blue coordinates are going to rotate with the Euler angles, okay? So the very first thing we do to implement the Euler angles is we rotate our blue coordinate axis about the z hat or e3 triple prime uh, axis by an angle phi. So this is going to rotate this way. E1 triple prime is going to rotate in that direction by angle phi. And E2 triple prime is going to rotate in that direction by an angle phi. And so that represents a rotation vector which points along the E3 triple prime or z hat axis which we'll write as phi vector. Okay, so that's the first rotation you do to implement the Euler angle. Okay, so now we have our first rotation having been done. We still have our x, y, and z hats. Those are fixed. Those are never going to move. But now we have our new coordinate system, which is the result of rotating the, the previous coordinate system. So now we have an E1 double prime, E2 double prime, and an E3 double prime. Now because we, the previous rotation was a rotation about the E3 triple prime ax axis, E3 double prime hat, that's actually exactly the same as E3 triple prime. And that's the same as the Z hat. So even though we're using a new coordinate uh, name for this axis, it's actually the same as the previous one. Okay. So the next rotation you do for Euler angles is you rotate about the E2 double prime axis by an angle theta. And so that means that you're going to rotate uh, about this axis here by an angle theta, which is going to bring down the E3 double prime axis by an angle theta. And that, of course, is going to send the E1 double prime axis down by the same angle theta. And so this rotation about the E2 double prime axis, the rotation vector for this looks like this. So here's the, ro here's the uh, rotation vector like that. It points along E2 double prime and we're going to call that theta vector. So this gives us our new coordinate axis, a new coordinate system, uh, which we'll show on the next slide. And then for the last rotation, to use other angles, we have our coordinate axes, our single prime coordinate axes that look like this. For this last rotation, we rotate once again about the E3 axis, the E3 prime axis, okay? So that's going to be a rotation about this axis, like so, by an angle psi, and so that's going to bring the E1 prime axis up by an angle psi, and the same for the E2 axis, angle psi, and we'll call this rotation vector, which points along the E3 prime axis, we'll call that rotation vector psi vector. And so let's look at what we have finally in the end. And so this is what uh, the final relationship between uh, the coordinate axes looks like after we've done all the Euler angle rotations. Uh, it's a little hard to see here in, th in two dimensions, uh, but we can basically cast any rotation of a body in terms of these three rotations. And so because uh, rotation vectors can be added together, we can use the three rotation vectors we've already seen, phi vector, theta vector, and psi vector, to express a rotation, uh, any rotation uh, 
using these Euler angles. So let's look at what look that, that looks like. So if we have an angular um, velocity vector, little omega, we can write that angular velocity vector as the sum of these th three different rotations that we already saw. Phi hat, or sorry, phi dot along around the z hat axis, that's the very first rotation we do for the Euler angles. Theta dot times e2 double prime hat, so that's that second angle that we rotate through that we just saw. And then the third angle, psi dot uh, times e3 hat. Now this is a nice way of expressing the uh, angular velocity of an object. The problem is that these three uh, vectors are not actually orthogonal. There's actually uh, a non-zero projection of, of some of these vectors upon the other vectors. Uh, and in the end, remember, we want to be able to write our rotation vector in terms of either the lab frame vectors, so the x, x y, and z hat vectors, or the final coordinate system we have, uh, e1, e2, e3 hat. And so what we need to do is to convert, basically we need to convert this vector and or one of these two vectors into the other coordinate system. So let's see how that works. And so the way we convert between the different vectors is we look back at each of the rotations one at a time and figure out how to write each of the basis vectors in the new coordinate system in terms of the basis vectors for the old coordinate system. So here, for example, remember the first rotation we have for the Euler angles is by an angle uh, phi about the z hat or e3 double prime axes. And so that means that there is a pretty simple relationship between uh, these other vectors here. So for instance, we can see that we can write e1 double prime as equal to x hat times the cosine of this angle phi plus y hat times the sine of the angle phi. Similar expression for e2 double prime. That's going to be equal to minus x hat sine phi plus y hat cosine phi. And remember our, our rotation vector here for the first roller angle, that's pretty easy. Um, we've already actually written it here. Phi vector is just going to be whatever the angle phi is times z hat or times e3 double prime. And so in order to work out uh, the different rotation angles, uh, we basically follow this, this pr procedure where we work backwards from the current uh, coordinate axis back to the last coordinate axis before we did the Euler angle rotation. So let's try one more, uh, and then I'll leave the rest of these as an exercise. And so remember, the second Euler angle rotation is a rotation about the E2 double prime or E2 prime axis by an angle theta. And so we can see then that there's going to be an angle theta between E3 uh, prime hat and E3 double prime hat, and an angle theta here between uh, E1 double prime and E2 and E1 single prime. Okay, And so that means, for instance, that E1 prime hat, that's going to be equal to E1 double prime cos theta minus E3 double prime hat times the sine of theta. Similar expression for E3 single prime, that's going to be equal to uh, E1 double prime times the sine of theta plus E3 double prime cos theta. And then now we have an expression for the prime axes in terms of the double prime axes. And remember from the previous uh, slide, we have an expression for these double prime axes in terms of the inertial x, y, and z hat axes. And so this is the sequence you follow to basically work out the rotation vectors.
uh, in the different coordinate systems. Okay, so to take a specific example of one of the rotation vectors, we've got phi vector, and remember that that results uh, that corresponds to rotation about the z hat or e three double prime axes by an angle phi, and so phi vector that's of course just going to be the angle phi times z hat. That's pretty easy, but now we want to write that in terms of uh, the double prime uh, coordinate axis. Well, that's also pretty easy. This is going to be phi e three hat double prime. Okay, so the very next rotation we have, remember, is about the e two double prime axis by an angle theta. So our e two double prime axis is going to agree with our e two prime axis, but our double prime, our single prime E1, that's going to point down here, single prime, and there's going to be an angle theta between the E1 double prime and the E1 single prime. And then there'll be also an angle theta between our E3 single prime and the E3 double prime. Okay? And so now what we need to do is to write our old e3 double prime in terms of our new e3 prime and e1 prime. And so how do we do that? We get phi times minus e1 prime hat times the sine of theta. And you can see that has to be the case because e1 single prime that points a little bit downward. And so there's a little bit of a projection of the old E3 double prime onto that, but it's but it's negative. Okay. Plus E3 single prime cosine theta. I think that one's pretty easy to see since there's just this angle theta here between those two factors. Okay? And then finally, just to complicate things even more. We have our last rotation, our last Euler angle rotation, which is about the E3 prime axis by an angle psi. And so that brings our new E1 axis like that. And it brings our new E2 axis up like that. And so there's an angle psi between the E1 single prime and the E1 vector and an angle psi between the new E2 and the old E2 prime. Of course the new E3 hat vector that points along E3 prime hat and so those two things agree. And so uh, when we're writing out our expression for phi vector that vector actually right here, the E3 prime hat, that's just going to be E3. But the E1 prime hat, that's going to change because now we've rotated by an angle psi about the E3 axis. And so how does that work out? Okay, so now we have this. Phi times minus, and then we need to rewrite E1 hat. E1 hat is going to be, sorry, E1 hat prime, excuse me, that's going to be E1 hat cos psi minus E2 hat sine psi. And of course, this is all times sine theta. And then we have the last component, which is E3 hat. E3 hat prime, but remember that E3 hat prime and E3 hat are both the same. And so you get this expression for the rotation angle phi vector. Okay, let's try one more example. So here, let's think about uh, the rotation vector theta. So theta is equal to, 
the angle theta times e2 hat prime. That's what it's equal to. Okay. Sorry. And to go from the single prime coordinate system to the no prime coordinate system, we do a final rotation, remember, about the e3 hat prime axis by an angle psi. So that means that our e1 vector points like this with an angle psi between it and the e1 prime. And then there's an angle psi between the e2, the final e2 vector, and the original e2 prime vector. And so now we need to write e2 prime in terms of these unprime coordinates. And you can see basically from this figure here that our theta vector is going to be theta, the angle, times e1 hat sine psi plus e2 hat cosine psi. And so here are the final expressions for the three rotation vectors. You've got this long expression for phi vector, and that's not too surprising, that's the longest expression because the phi vector, that's the very first rotation. And so all the subsequent rotations, those are applied to the phi vector. And so you get a very long expression for that. The theta vector is a little bit shorter. And then, of course, the very last rotation, the phi, uh, psi vector, is very short because it's actually defined in terms of the final coordinate system. And so let's see how you can convert any rotation vector into these uh, three rotation vectors and see what the final expression for an arbitrary rotation vector is in the body frame. Okay, so here's the final uh, angular velocity vector. It's the sum of all three rotation vectors. And so here we're using the dots because we're thinking of the velocities, angular velocities. And so for the angles theta, for the angles phi, theta, and psi, now we'll replace those angles with phi dot, theta dot, psi dot. And so what we want to do now in order to write the omega vector is combine all the e1 hat terms and then all the e2 hat terms and all the e3 hat terms to give us the final expression for that velocity vector. I'm just going to write it out here for you really quick. Okay, so here's the final expressions in terms of the e1, e2, e3 hat vectors. Here's the e1 hat component, e2 hat component, and the e3 hat component. Now these expressions look a little bit different from what's in the book uh, because uh, in the book uh, Taylor is just interested in objects uh, that have symmetry uh, along the uh, e3 axis. And so in that case you can actually arbitrarily set psi to be equal to zero. Essentially you can ignore that very last rotation. Uh, and so you can see that if you set psi, the, the angle equal to zero for an instant, uh, a lot of these terms are going to go away. That of course doesn't mean that psi dot is zero, um, since the angle psi is essentially an arbitrary starting point. Um, if you have symmetry about the e3 axis, you can actually uh, ignore that rotation, at least for the purposes of, of calculating the angle, um, and then you're allowed to have, and then you're required, though, to have the angular velocity. It's a little confusing, actually, I think, the way he does it. Um, in any case, this is the complete expression, um, and you see that it differs just a little bit from the expression in the book.